What's going on guys? Uh, today I am doing a oil change on my 73 uh, gas engine that Ford just put out. It's 2020. Um, I know they have like the F250. This is actually the F59 and it is actually a tool truck. This is my business I started about uh, five months ago. It's going really well. Um, so it's coming up on its first oil change here. I got about 6,000 miles on it. I think they say recommended is, I believe they say eight to 9,000 for the first oil change. And then uh, after that, it's about 10,000 miles. But on this, obviously I'm hauling heavy toolboxes and uh, it's pretty, pretty hard miles on the engine. So I'm just doing it a little bit early. And uh, from here on out, I'll probably do maybe 6,000, every 6,000 miles probably, so. Uh, what you're gonna need for this job, you'll need a 13 millimeter socket or uh, with a ratchet or wrench. Um, I am using these double boxes, double box uh, ratcheting wrenches. Uh, these are sweet, these are actually made by Cornwell. Um, you have a deep end on one end and then you have a regular shallow end on the other. These things are pretty sweet and they are actually on sale for this month. So contact your uh, local Cornwell dealer, get one today. It's a little shameless plug there. Uh, so I have the 5W30 Motorcraft oil uh, that I'm using it for it. Really any full synthetic 530 is gonna work. I'm just kind of anal about it because it's a new truck and just wanna keep it all factory. Um, and then for your oil filter, it's gonna be the FL820S. Um, and yeah, and we'll jump into it start from here all right so here we are underneath the truck there is your drain bolt there and your oil filter and like I said this is a 13 millimeter um, grab my wrench here wrong side Sorry for my horrible filming there. Crack that baby off. Alright, that's about hand. Untighten that from there. And I did have this truck running for a good amount of time, so it's probably going to come pissing out of here. Probably always wear gloves when you're doing this, especially when the vehicle is hot, because this can be really, ooh, really hot sometimes. So. And there she is. We'll wait for her to drain out, and then we'll move on to the oil filter. Alrighty, I'm going to take the oil filter off here. Hopefully it's not too super tight. Yeah, it is tight. B, I'm gonna have to grab an oil filter wrench, BRB. All right, so this oil filter was on way too tight. So, couldn't get it off my hand, so we are gonna go with plan B. Oh my gosh. I have no idea why that is so freaking tight. Definitely, um, if you don't have an oil filter wrench, invest in one, because Sometimes, I mean, this is probably straight from factory like this, but sometimes you'll get an idiot and you'll be changing your oil and whoever did it last just crank that thing on there. And, uh, yeah, so you'll eventually probably end up needing one. They come in handy. Woo! Yeah. Also, I did want to mention, I did take the uh, oil cap off um, from the engine side. I would recommend doing that. Um, you can actually get a little bit more oil to come out uh, if you keep that open. And uh, we'll wait for this to drain here and move on to the next step. So oil filter is off, drain plug is out. 
Um, I'm pretty particular with how much time I let my stuff drain, so I'm actually probably going to sit here for at least, I don't know, 10 minutes, just let that drain. And while we're waiting for that, oh, we will come out here and start prepping our oil filter to go back on there. So, make sure, I'm sure everybody pretty much knows this at this point, but um, you want to lube up your filter. Probably should have my knife on me, that'll make my life a lot easier. Um, you want to lube up the outside, the o little o-ring on the outside of the filter. Um, because otherwise, if you don't do that, you are going to have a fun time the next time you change your oil because it is not going to come off very easy. So just dip your finger in there, get a little bit on there, and lube the ring around there for you. And something you can do, everybody has different opinions on whether you should or should not do this, um, filling the oil filter. Uh, in my opinion, Especially on an engine this big, I think you probably should do it because um, you got a couple seconds there when you start your uh, truck back up, and you can almost, you can literally hear it run dry. So you definitely don't want that over time. That's not going to be good for your engine. So get ready for me to spill half this bottle. Yep, there it is. There we go. All right, back underneath the truck. We're just gonna wipe off any excess oil, make sure it's nice and clean. Again, like I said, I'm pretty particular about this. So I just like to make sure everything is nice and clean. And usually I usually leave it sit about at least 10 minutes till I put everything back on, just so you can usually tell when there's a very slow drip coming out of the uh, pan there that you're about ready to go so what we're gonna do from here after wiping her off grab my oil filter oh, this is gonna be fun. and screw her on there I could not do that one-handed so I just hand started everything and then I'll finish it from there so That bad boy up there. And like I said, I don't like to get these too super tight. Just enough to where it's not going to leak anything. But at the same time, it's not going to be a pain in the butt when you're taking it off the next time. Wait, I did, uh, I'm pretty anal about stuff, so I just cleaned up the drain plug real quick, gave her a good wipe, make sure she's all clean, and tighten that on there, and grab your 13 mil wrench or socket with a ratchet. And attempt to put that on there. Oh, and just tighten her up. And you don't want to get the drain plug too tight because they are very easy to strip out. Oh, just a decent amount of hand tighten there. And give her one final wipe and you are ready to start filling her up. Sweet. So I forgot to mention uh, the reason why I like to wipe everything off underneath is just because that way you can tell um the next time you're changing oil or um if you're having an oil leak or something like that you can just look underneath there and see if see where it's leaking from if it's the filter or the oil pan or what it might be that's why i always try to just keep it nice and clean under there so next step gonna fill her up i think it's about uh they call for eight quarts i believe um so what we're gonna do is we we're gonna do probably i don't know six and a half seven see where we're at there um and then uh, go from there so again get a funnel just get a funnel make your life so much easier why don't i have one 
I do have one, I'm just too lazy to go grab it. So, kind of pour that in there. Also another little shameless plug. If you guys ever used these lights, they're called a Maxion Cyclops. Um, best light I've ever owned. 720 lumens. I think they cost around like 30 bucks. I mean, you can't beat it. And you can get them off your local Cornwall truck. Another little plug. I'm sure you guys enjoy watch me, watching me fill this up, but I am going to spare you and start filming from the next step. All right, so from here, we're going to put your oil in. I'm gonna check the depth stick here real quick, see what we're looking at. I probably put in about, I don't know, probably seven quarts, I think I was at. We're gonna pull our drain plug out, or our uh, dip stick here and see where we're at. Usually after, after doing it, I like to wipe it off once put it back in and then do the, uh, do the check on it. And these dipsticks are a pain in the butt to try to get in and out. Oh, shoot. And we are at the very bottom there. Very bottom, so we put in about seven quarts. So I think uh, eight quarts is is the trick there. So we're gonna fill her up the rest of the way, check her, and then uh, we're gonna start it and then check it again. Uh, make sure you always do that when you're changing oil because uh, sometimes it might suck a little bit more into the filter or whatever, and you won't get a true reading until you start it up. And let it run for. For a little bit and then uh, go from there so we're gonna fill her up the rest of the way start her up and then check again all right we are gonna start her up here and do another check here i'll let you listen to the engine give you a little treat Double check and see where we're at. All right, let her run there for about 30 seconds. Give her a good wipe. And put her back in. sitting just below halfway so we're gonna top her off with just a bit more and we'll be all set and the last thing you guys are gonna want to do is just reset it um, depends what year or what vehicle you have uh, this one has an older style dash in it um, so for this one, you just go into uh, driver assist, you hit uh, maintenance monitor, and then it'll take you straight up to oil life. Um, you just hold okay to reset it, wait until all the bars go up, and you are back to 100%. All right, so after you're all finished with that, you are just gonna wanna double check. Usually I uh, try to double check and just Make sure nothing's leaking. Go back underneath, double check the um, drain plug, the oil filter, make sure we're all good to go. Um, so that's gonna be what I'm gonna do right now here real quick. But other than that, that is how you change your oil on your 2020 plus 7.3. Um, honestly, I'm very happy with this engine, very happy with this vehicle. Um, I have not had any issues other than one recall um, that was um, nothing with the engine. So, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. Well, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, like this video, share it, subscribe, 
um, and I will catch you in the next video. Appreciate it, guys.